Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Poets and Quants' online MBA panel. Today, we're talking to alumni and students from three leading programs to talk about the student experience. I'm your host, Christy Bleizeffer with Poets and Quants, and I want to welcome all of our viewers out there. Please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions you have for our panelists, and I'll do my best to get to them as we move along. And of course, thank you to our panelists for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Uh, we're going to start by letting each of you introduce yourself, uh, tell us where you're based, the school you attended, and maybe a fun fact about you or your company. Uh, Matt, let's start with you. Thanks, Christy. My name is Matt Farsava. I have the pleasure of attending the Gee School of Business at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which is a long way of saying University of Illinois, go Illini. Um, <laughs> I live just outside of Toronto. I work downtown Toronto for the Ontario government. A fun fact about me is that working in government is actually my second career. Uh, I've had an opportunity to go back to school now while doing my MBA after spending 20 years in IT. So okay. it's kind of a weird second career now to be in the public service. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Reed, how about you? Sure. So my name is Reed Applebaum and I uh, am a student at um, uh, Tepper School of Business at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I'm based out of Boston. Um, and I work for uh, State Street Bank, uh, previously in FX sales and trading, and now um, and now in a alpha commercialization capacity. Um, <clears throat> an interesting fact about me is uh, I have been snowboarding in five different countries. So um, I'll leave it there. I wish I bet you wish you were there right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, Amira. Hi, everyone. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to be here. Um, my name is Amira Fleischmaker. I am a student at the Kelly Direct program that's part of Indiana University. I am based out of DFW, Texas, and I'm currently working at JP Morgan. I'm an associate internal auditor covering primarily compliance and risk management. And I went to school at um, CUNY, which is the City University of New York at Baruch College, where I studied accounting for my undergrad. Oh, very good. Thank you to all of you and welcome. Uh, Matt, why don't you start by kind of telling us what led you to pursue an online MBA? Um, did you consider a full-time program? And what was the key factor that led you to Geese? Absolutely. So I was looking at what all the different options were, both ones that were geographically close to me here in Toronto, as well as international options. And there were really two things that were driving it. One was something that could fit in with all the other things on the go, with working full-time, with being a dad with a couple of kids, being a husband and also looking for a high quality program. There were lots of online programs that didn't necessarily pass the smell test. And so finding one that was coming out of a big 10 school could speak to the quality. And when it was delivered online, it made it a little bit easier to fit in with a busy schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Reed, how about you? Sure, so uh, I guess what drove me to Tepper mostly is I, I uh, grew up in the Pittsburgh area. And one, one thing that I wanted to sort of keep going as I progressed through my career was, uh, at Pittsburgh Network. So uh, the, the location of the school was definitely uh, a big driver for me. Uh, and the other piece of it, <clears throat> I'll say, was the uh, the STEM designated uh, portion of the of the Tepper MBA. So I've spent the majority of my career in sales um, and sort of was looking to build out the quantitative aspect of it and uh, felt like Tepper uh, fit that bill. Yeah. Did you consider like a full-time or a part-time in-person program or was it always going to be an online for you? Uh, I, I considered, I, I would say for a short period of time, a, a full-time program. Uh, I think uh, given the, I guess, given the nature of where I felt my career was at the moment, the part-time made, made the most sense and I think has been a good decision so far. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how about you, Amira? Um, yeah, so I, I I did not consider any in residence programs. I was strictly looking at online, uh, just because at the time I was still living in New York, but I knew I was going to be moving sometime soon. But with that being said, um, I think there are really four main key factors that I was looking at, and Kelly kind of hit on all four. So the first one was obviously the program rating. Um, and for me, it was the fact that Kelly is really the online program that's existed since 1999. So it's really been around for a long time and has gained that reputation. 
And that uh, the second kind of factor is that I was looking for a program that allows you to have flexibility in the courses that you take. So I do have a business background, so I didn't want to be really restricted to a lot of the core business courses. Um, so for me, Kelly really is like the 50-50 split between the two and has a lot of electives. Um, the third factor is I still wanted it to be as close to real life as possible with it being an online program. Uh, so I was looking at programs that have live lectures and as much interaction as possible. Um, and then the fourth one, I love to travel and I have done a study abroad when I was an undergrad. So I was hoping to find something that will give me the opportunity to do it again. And I certainly did. And I'm sure I'll talk about it a little later, but Oh, That's great. kind of the key yeah. four. Yeah. Uh, so Reed, uh, to you, uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit about the learning experience? What are the classes like? How do you get to interact with your classmates and your professors? Sure. So I would say one of the one of the things that's been a pleasant surprise when I started at Tepper was sort of the camaraderie that's built among the among the cohort of, uh, of folks also pursuing an MBA at the same time. So uh, the classwork, I would say initially was fairly daunting. So as I'm sure other panelists can attest on this, on this call, you know, you, you have to approach it and be very deliberate with uh, your time and your energy and your resources, um, which are all fixed and, and something that needs to be, you know, you have to think about how you're planning out your day. So I would say the classwork has been, um, you know, challenging in ways and and not as challenging in others. Um, you know, it's one interesting thing is I would say how much um, my perspective has changed towards coursework uh, in my undergrad versus versus pursuing a graduate degree. Having you know, having had eight plus years um, working in in the business world, um, so you know, that's all of those things have been have been pleasant uh, you know pleasant surprises, but you know. Challenging in some ways, though. So it's certainly, uh, you know, for all future students out there, it's uh, it's certainly a commitment to be prepared for. Oh, for sure, um, Amira. Yeah, I absolutely agree um, from my experience as well. I do want to add to that a little bit that it it kind of it's up to you a little bit on depending on what courses you take, whether it's something that you have some background on or maybe something completely new. But even with the courses, I found that I have had some background in. Um, there's still so many different perspectives and kind of like a fresh, you know, more updated um, curriculum that you're learning from. So you still find that you're learning a lot of new new things, even though you thought you knew about the subject. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, and I really have been really thrilled with all the classes that I've taken so far. Obviously, the kind of structure varies a little bit depending on the course, but I love having that weekly uh, live lecture with the professors and we have um, like breakout sessions with the students where we get to do a lot of course group work and discussions, but also have again that once a week, but having the flexibility of doing other lectures and work on your own time. Yeah. Do you feel like you're able to make some connections with students and your professors that aren't you know, aren't just sitting and listening to a lecture? A hundred percent. But I think a lot of it also has to do with some of the um, in-person experiences that the program offers. Um, so I will maybe keep that for a little bit later, but certainly there's a nice connection between having the Zoom interactions um, with the in-person experiences. So Absolutely. definitely. Yeah. Uh, Matt, how about at uh, Geese? So the nice thing with the GEES program is it's almost divided into two. So every class has both live in-person portions over Zoom and every week's lecture is actually delivered either two or three times so that no matter which time zone you're in or if you're traveling, there's still an opportunity to do it live during the day. And then there's also a self-directed piece that's delivered through Coursera. So the ability to do both really is nice to be able to find a way to make it fit around your existing schedule. And then with each of the courses, there's also live group work and at the beginning of each course, you're able to set what your availability looks like. So you'll be partnered with people from all around the world whose free time matches up with yours, which makes it a really cool way to leverage the global elements to it while still being able to get some of those in-person group activities. It's really kind of awesome that way. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. Um, Amira, let's, we'll go to you for the, the next one. Um, 
what would you say is the highlight of your experience so far? The the things that you maybe remember the most? Yep. So definitely my global immersion trip to Rio and Brazil this last January. Um, absolutely the highlight of the entire MBA program. And that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted this program, right? Um, so it was just to quickly talk about it. It was a group of 30 students uh, who come from in different, they're in different stages of the program, but it is an elective course. And we learned a lot about um, cross-cultural communication and kind of doing business in Brazil. So we visited a lot of companies that are based off of it, of, of the country, but have operations in different countries as well. Uh, and we did have an opportunity to have like a case study presentation to one of the companies based of, in Rio. So that was a really cool experience. And to my prior comments, a great way to meet the people that I've been talking to on Zoom to finally meet them in person and really get to know them on like a much deeper level. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry. I just just to quickly add to it. So Brazil is just one component of those in-person experiences, but we also have an annual element where we go to an on-location, sometimes on campus, like a five-day crash course, where again, you get to meet those people. So really those in-person experiences that are scattered throughout the program are just my absolute favorite part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Matt, how about you? The highlight of well, there's a lot of commonality here. Um, the fact <laughs> that both the ability to do things virtual, but also have some of these opportunities to come together. Um, one of the neat things that that Geese does is it offers both in person and virtual immersions. So in the depths of COVID, when no one could go anywhere, we were still able to do a virtual immersion with a group at Columbia. But we also have in person immersions both across the U.S. and coming up in Brazil as well. So that, as well as every September, getting together in Illinois going to an Illinois football game, getting a proper student ID card. So you get that in-person experience, but still being able to get your MBA in a way that fits your schedule. It's cool that it could do both those things. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Reed, what about you? What's the highlight at Tepper so far? So I'll, I'll give a just a slightly different answer. So maybe, maybe something uh, somewhat unique to Tepper is we're uh, on campus in Pittsburgh every six weeks uh, for some coursework and and sort of networking events among our classmates. So that to me has has probably been the highlight getting to meet, you know, other students from a variety of different backgrounds, you know, not just finance, but people who are working in healthcare and engineering and robotics and all, you know, all sorts of different industries and backgrounds. So that has been, uh, you know, getting the chance to meet, meet them, you know, become friends, uh, you know, struggle through the coursework together at times, you know, it's, is, uh, has been great. So uh, that'll, that'll be my answer. Yeah. Well, good one. Thank you. Um, Matt, tell us a little bit about, um, the work-life balance. You were talking that you had family, uh, your job, your school, what, how do you manage the, all of that? And what advice do you give to students considering an online MBA? Absolutely. I think the best is to almost take the idea of balance and put out the window <laughs> and it's just a little bit towards, can you be able to focus at different points in time on the different priorities? So are you able to find a, a school program that allows you to still focus in work, that allows you to still focus in your personal life? And then on the flip side, do you have do you have a way to manage your time to find the time to focus on school? So for me, it's knowing that as a morning person, I like being able to get up early, get my coursework, whether that's during the week or on the weekends, that I do my classes in the evening. And it still allows me to focus on attending hockey games and ringette games and baseball games for the kids, still lets me focus on my job. And yet I can still get that depth of experience without feeling like I'm shortchanging other elements. It's it's tough to find the time for each of those things, but finding a program that allows you to do that, I think is really key. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Reed, what about you? Yeah, I would I would echo a lot of the things that that Matt just said, and, and what I had mentioned earlier on, it's, it's really about being deliberate with your time. So to be able to be able to have, uh, you know, your life doesn't end when you start this part-time MBA, you become much more busy, but it's about finding pockets of time to, you know, watch, lexer, watch lectures, you know, uh, get problem sets done, take finals, you know, whether that's on flights, when you're commuting, you know, walking on the treadmill, all that, all those different times when you have, you know, basically free time that can be that can be put towards it. It's it's just about uh, finding those pockets and making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Amira, do you have any advice for managing? 
Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree. I think that's true across the board. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that right now, like the the team I'm on and my employer in general is very supportive. So they kind of understand when I ask to do uh, events like this or when I have something, you know, other conflicting, urgent priorities from school. So completely supportive. And I love that. And I was, I did have a team previously that maybe asked me to reprioritize a little bit, but I was very clear about my goals. And this is something that I'm doing for my long-term development rather than my for this particular role or like short-term focus right so I guess advice number one is just be very clear about your goals and your priorities and then the second one is really like leverage your network and the people you're working with um in in the program and what I mean is the people that I've come across we're all like busy and we are doing this because we decided to do so rather than from obligation. But people are very supportive of each other and understand when other things come up and they'll just kind of back you up. Um, so just keep that in mind um, and be be there for others when they need it and they'll be there for you when you do. So, yeah, that's great advice. Did any of you um, find any pushback from your employers about the time commitment or, or was just having like an open conversation, um, you know, kind of the way to go. Matt? So definitely an open conversation was the key. Um, there, I'm lucky that now in my current job, I don't have to travel as much as opposed to previously where I had to. I feel like there might have been a little bit more conflict. Uh, mm -hmm. The biggest part to it, I mean, especially when you apply at Geese, one of the things you're asked for is a letter of recommendation from your boss. Mm -hmm. So it actually makes it a little bit easier to involve them in that process so that it becomes a little bit more of a holistic conversation. I think those things make a big difference so that nobody's kind of kept in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Reed, anything to add to that or similar experience? No, not really. Yeah, similar experience. I couldn't agree more with uh, how Matt described that being up front and, and, you know, open with the communication around what the time commitment's going to be, when class is, uh, you know, it's, it's generally, you know, these programs are set up in a way, you know, to allow you to work, uh, and also take the classes usually in the evening. So, you know, if you have days or, or you know, nights that are going later with work, you know, there's, you know, not unique to Tepper, but with most of these programs, you know, there's three, three, four, five different um, sections of the same lecture you can, you can dial into. So um, my, but, but same thing, you know, my employer has been extremely uh, supportive of it, you know, same, same situation with a, you know, a letter of recommendation from my direct manager. So you know, in any, any situation like that, it's just been, uh, it's been full support from State Street for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, sticking with you, Reid, um, you know, a lot of people think that the MBA is kind of appropriate for people looking primarily for professional development and not necessarily, you know, personal development and, and, and soft skill growth. Were there aspects of your program that you helped kind of evolve, evolve behind the beyond the professional career orientation goals? Uh, definitely. If, if, if anything, that's probably been the, ma the majority of the benefit, I would say, so far, given that given that we do see each other, you know, in person every every six weeks. Um, and, you know, there's planned for those in-person weekends, there's planned sort of social events around it. So, you know, it helps everybody sort of, you know, get out of their comfort zone and meeting new people from diverse backgrounds and you know, we have events planned together and it's it's sort of been, a, you know, an entire experience of of network building in addition to to the coursework. So, yes, there's the there's the professional development piece. But, you know, I would say even a larger piece is the is the social aspect aspect and network building along with it. Yeah, absolutely. Amira, what about you? Yeah, I mean, we talked a lot about how difficult it is to manage. So I would definitely stay like just resilience and the ability to prioritize um I don't think that's anything new but definitely just help me like push those a little bit farther and then I think like really a lot of the courses are about like management and leadership but these are things that you don't just apply in your career these are things that you apply in your like just circles around your family and your friends and kind of anywhere you go and just best practices on how to tackle different challenges and like crisis management they could really be applicable to a lot of different things so um yeah absolutely yeah very good uh matt those are some great points that have already been raised i i think that the idea of collaboration is really important when we talk about an mba when we talk about certain themes in in business today 
the ability to collaborate either in a local group or internationally really matters. And so for me, that's a huge part about the GEESE setup. With so much group work involved, it's constantly pushing not just the professional elements, but how can you apply that interpersonally? And one of the neat things in our school is there's so many people at different stages in their career that whether you're relatively new in your career or, in, I mean, in my case, I'd already worked a full career and then I'm career two. So for somebody like me coming in, instead of looking at it and going, well, this is all stuff I know, the opportunity to mentor gives me a chance to get a whole bunch of fresh perspectives. And those sorts of elements are really, really interesting in the program and have pushed me in ways that I didn't expect coming in. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to I want to give everyone a chance kind of to talk about the professional development opportunities and career um, centers at their school, because I do think that that is a, one reason a lot of people want an MBA, um, it, no matter what format. Amira, do you want to tell us about what kind of um, career development or um, networking opportunities um, that you do get in an online MBA, um, you know, which is it's something that a lot of people in the full-time program really value. Do you kind of have that same kind of opportunity in the in the online version? Yeah. So online would be funny to call it because now these are actually, I mean, there are a lot of online events and we have a bunch of like organizations that host different panelists and, you know, professionals that you can dial in online, but mm -hmm. there are also actually a lot of in-person events. So we do have like, what we call um, Kelly Connect Nights, where every, I think, couple months or so, based on like a certain region where there's a big group of students, there are people who host like happy hours or lunches or whatever it may be. So people can come together and connect. Um, and then outside of that, I think it's really just like any other program where you have career fairs and you have like newsletters that tell you about open positions and you have a career advisor, you always know who to go to and just the career services center. So really just like any other regular program. Yeah. The network that you've been able to kind of build so far, do you find that that is something that is going to be valuable for years to come? A hundred percent. I mean, I'm not, we have a lot of students. I'm not going to lie and say that I've acquired so many, <laughs> so many acquaintances. I did, but the combination of the online lectures and again, those in-person experiences, I definitely know I have at least a small group of people that I will definitely keep in touch with and connect with way beyond the, the program. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt, tell us a little bit about the career services at Geese. Absolutely. And so we kind of can look at it from two frames. One is, what does it mean for folks who live in the U.S.? And the second is, what does it mean for folks internationally? Because it's a little different for each. So like other programs, there's job fairs, there's alumni networks, meetups that happen fairly regularly all across the U.S. Internationally, it's a little bit more of a plug-in based upon where individual alumni have gone, not to necessarily to the same level as happens inside the US. But the fact that both are there is really interesting. One of the new things that we've added is we have, uh, we have a student council that helps develop career tools for students. Oh. So we've recently relaunched an entire career tool toolkit um, that helps with everything from how to interview, how to prepare a resume, ways of leveraging one's networks. And so those extra elements, almost the soft skill piece that wraps around your MBA is very similar to what you'd get from an in-person program. So it's kind of cool to be able to have those virtual tools. I feel like nobody knew what the term hybrid work meant before we went into COVID. And now it's almost like every one of these programs has become a hybrid MBA instead of purely virtual or purely in-person. Yeah. And what about your network that you've built so far? It, uh, it's been a pleasant surprise. I did not expect the network that's happened, both from a mix of, as, as, as Amira said, in-person events, um, as Reed talked about with the social elements, but also just the amount of group work and the number of projects that you do wrapped in the middle of your MBA forces you to create tight connections in a way you wouldn't necessarily expect otherwise. So it's yeah. been a beautiful and pleasant surprise that's coming out of the program. Yeah, great. And uh, Reed, how about the uh, Tepper Career Services? Yeah, so career services wise, you know, there's a lot of a lot of similar things to what uh, Matt and Amir have just described. You know, there's 
there's pretty frequent, um, you know, networking events that happen, you know, I'm based in Boston and, and Tepper's in Pittsburgh, but they're still, you know, in the Northeast area, you know, tons of different events where you can meet alumni and current and, and future students. So, uh, so those are really great. Um, in addition to that, there's uh, a fairly robust connection between the full-time program and, and part-time in, in a way that um, sort of still connects you to specific relationships that Tepper has with, you know, firms in whatever industry you might want to go into. So whether that be consulting or investment banking or, you know, corporate finance, some some specific area that you have, there's, you know, there's a full career department that, that you know, is is available to speak to that helps you with your resume build out and sort of interviewing skills, you know, introductions to specific recruiters in the industry you want. So, so that's all, um, you know, that's all there and, and, you know, has, I think, worked pretty well for a lot of people. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, network wise, um, same sort of thing. Uh, there's, you know, we're, we're in a, a similar boat where, you know, in these, in these sort of semesters, you run into difficulties where study groups among, among your cohort, um, develop naturally. So you end up, you know, you spend a lot of time on calls with some, some of your fellow students, um, and get to know them pretty well through sort of your common struggles. So, um, I would say, you know, the network's built in, in a social way, but also in a, uh, you know, the common denominator of, of uh, you know, excelling in your coursework. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, Amira, um, do you have any um, advice or maybe words of wisdom for people who are considering an MBA, but are really kind of apprehensive about the, the quantitative parts of it? Yeah, um, I guess like a lot of the really the core, like the base courses, um, at least I can speak for my program, they really assume that you don't have like a business background or anything. So they really start you off from scratch for the most part. Um, if you need like any additional help, I know my professors have been really good at providing additional support and very responsive. I haven't had a single time when I asked like a question or anything and did not get a response within a day. Um, so, you know, there's that, like you, you will learn, obviously it's going to be challenging and you're not doing this because it's going to be easy because then you're not getting any value out of it. So it will be challenging, but don't feel intimidated by it is my advice because they will help you. And also outside of professors, again, the network, the people who come into the program have such different backgrounds and areas of expertise that, and that goes not just for quantitative, but for any skill. If you're weaker on a skill or you might be lacking something there are so many people out there who will help you and you will be in the group with them and you will learn from each other so just remember that it's it's really helpful to leverage that network yeah yeah uh reed what would you say i would say something similar in terms of uh leveraging the network so you know i the the one difference maybe i would i would highlight with pepper is i think the coursework got uh fairly in depth into some some quantitative aspects um at least from my perspective relatively quickly but you know the the group of the group of folks you're going through it with you know there's you quickly realize that you know some of them come from different backgrounds where this might be something they do you know on a, on a daily basis so there's people with coding background other folks with sales and finance backgrounds you know so it, it's sort of about um you know sort of uh I, I guess you could say um, collaborating on on you know figuring out how you bring in different different folks with different backgrounds and skill sets um, into it to try to to try to learn your way through. Um, same same thing with the, prof the professors are extremely extremely helpful. You know, there's there's office hours and there's and they I'm, I am amazed usually at how at how quickly they respond to emails and are willing to help. So you know, any times where where people have uh, have struggled with with certain concepts. Uh, you know, there's there's always been an attitude of of um, you know trying to lift those people up and and making sure that that everyone is learning and sort of getting uh, getting what they're meant to out of the uh, out of the courses. So yeah, absolutely, uh, Matt. What about you? Was were the quants uh, uh, something you were already good at, or so I would say that it was probably a mix of things. I probably was stronger on the accounting and the corporate finance side versus uh, not as much time spent on the investment side. And really, I think there's five things that really make a difference when, when I look at it, a couple of which have already been talked about, you know, how valuable the, the office hours are from the professors and the TAs, the depth of experience that one gets from one's classmates. Um, a couple of the other things that really help 
are that do-at-your-own-pace element through Coursera because it allows you to actually work ahead and figure out where some of those friction points might be early on so you know where to focus where you might have a challenge. Oh. Other than that, the fact that the GEES program is set up so you can actually almost load balance how many classes you're taking. So, it, so you can choose whether you want to do one at a time up to theoretically three at a time. So if there's a particular issue area, you can pull back on some of the other courses so you can really focus. Yeah. And then the fifth piece that intertwines with that is that because the classes, because the grading is in bell curved, and because there's so much group work, the students are incentivized to help each other. And I really think that that helps reinforce some of the things we've talked about, all of us have talked about in terms of the value of the network and those interpersonal connections. And for some people, that's going to be they need help on the quant side. For some people, it's going to be the theory side where they have some issues, as Amir talked about. I think those five things together really can help somebody overcome some of those challenges. If it was easy, anybody and everybody would have an MBA. That's right. That's right. Um, Reed, what is your, you know, kind of biggest piece of advice for those students that are considering but um, an online MBA but, but are kind of unsure? Uh, I would say to that, just don't sell yourself short. I think it's, you know, until you do something, it's, it's really impossible to know sort of how far you can stretch, you know, your brain and your ability to, you know, take the GMAT or to write, you know, write an essay, complete an application. So I would say don't, uh, don't have any hesitations around, you know, aiming high. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Amira, any advice? Yeah, kind of along those lines, but there's never, you know, there's never a good time, but the best time is now, right? Um, there's always going to be something, but I, I think it's just, with that being said, like sometimes I think it's okay for people not to fully know what exactly their goals are. I think that's how I kind of came in. Um, I knew I wanted to like move up in management, move up in my role, but I didn't have like a super clearly defined goal. And I think that's okay because don't let that discourage you from applying. You're going to learn so much and hear about so many different industries that maybe you didn't consider in so many different roles. I know that happened to me. Like it opened up a whole new like set of ideas of what I can be doing. Um, so, you know, just if you, if you have that thought in mind, don't think about it too much, just kind of go ahead and do it. Yeah, that, that's great advice. Uh, Matt. Absolutely. I think there's a couple of things. One is as, as some advice that an old boss used to give me was you'll never know how to be more efficient until you don't have enough time. And <laughs> that's a common thread that we've heard from, from Amir and from Rita too. I think that's a piece to it. The other part is to, as Reed said, don't sell yourself short, trust yourself. Trust the support network that you're plugging yourself into and that everybody's incentivized to help you succeed. And that if you're willing to put in the work and if you're willing to have a little bit of faith, then you can start learning just how much more you're capable of. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have a little bit more time. So I just want to give you each one more chance to kind of um, speak to our audience, which are, which are prospective students thinking about an online MBA and kind of tell them about, you know, the highlight about your school. What, what is great about your particular program? And uh, Matt, will stick with you. Thank you. So I would say that one of the great things with the GEES program, not only are you getting a Big Ten school, because of course that matters, but it's the fact that it can adapt to meet your needs from a global perspective. GEES is well known as one of the leading schools for accounting. So being able to get the quantitative perspective, but the best part is that it encourages you to be you and brings a diversity of perspectives to the table. And I think that's a really powerful way to empower yourself. All right, thank you, uh, Reed. Yeah, so so for Tepper, I'll say, I guess, you know, in, in some ways similar, I'll, I'll highlight the STEM designated aspect of it, because I think I think that's important for, for folks like myself that may, you know, may have uh, had careers up to this point that uh, emphasize more soft skills. It really it really does help you dig, dig deep into sort of, uh, you know, analytics or pieces of entrepreneurship that that may be what you're looking to do in the future. Um, and on top of that, it's sort of, uh, you know, the, the community aspect of it is is fantastic. So, you know, you run into a lot of a lot of smart classmates, a lot of, you know, really brilliant professors and TAs. So having having the, um, you know, the chance to to work with them and learn from learn from each other is really is really fantastic. So, um, yeah, that those will be my highlights for uh, for Tepper. Very good. And Amira. I think I mentioned a lot already, so I don't want to be repetitive. Um, <laughs> I will say that the, I touched on the global immersions. There are also 
domestic immersions in different cities you can do. So all of that fun stuff. Uh, but also from like an academic standpoint, like the flexibility that Kelly allows you in selecting the courses and then they have multiple major options, but, but you don't necessarily have to major. You can select to have a general MBA and just focus on any electives you would like, mix and match, really a large variety of options you can choose from. And then on top of that, actually, if you wanted to extend and really focus in on something, you can do an additional, I believe it is 12 credits to get a master's in a particular program on top of your MBA. So extend the program a little bit, which is, I think, a great opportunity if you want to have expertise in something else. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I mean, everything else, just the the in-person part of it, the fact that Kelly has been around for so long and they really have the tools to allow you to learn and all that online kind of complexities that people run into they've really got it down so well great well thanks to all of you for your insights and a a great kind of look into the student experience at your schools and i want to thank all our viewers for joining us today And uh, just remember that the conversation doesn't have to stop. We have a lot more videos with other um, great programs on our YouTube channel and also at poetsandquants.com. And we have have a lot more events like this where you can connect with different schools all throughout the year. Um, So keep in touch. And until next time, thanks very much. Bye-bye.